I'm Kelvin Lawrence Smith, um, and I run a letterpress workshop here uh, in Kennington. Uh, it's called Mr. Smith's Letterpress Workshop. We design, set, and print type. I really like using old technology, but I like using it in a contemporary way. So um, I use this as the basis for all the work. Uh, I like to uh, work slowly, and I like to make things. And I like to build things. So that that general process is something that I try to adhere to everything that I do. I was quite dissatisfied with my education, or elements of my education, and there was a really nice old workshop, empty. It was just the time where the Macintosh was just coming in, so everybody was really fixated by you know, new technology. But what I was really interested in was making things, and what type allowed me to do, or the workshop allowed me to do, was make my own work, you know, to mix my own inks, to choose my own papers, to change my type slightly, and get nice variations on the theme. And I went to work for a design company for a month, and I hated it. Someone there suggested I go and see Alan Kitching, who's a typographer, a well-known typographer. And I went to see Alan, and uh, I showed him my work, and he said, it's technically rubbish, you know, um, but I really, um, I like it, it's interesting. He said, um, he said, I can't pay much, but I can teach you everything I know, and uh, he didn't pay me much, and he taught me a lot. I started working for him one day a week as an assistant, and then built, built into a four-year apprenticeship. So by the time I'd finished that, I had quite an accomplished background or understanding of how to use type, how to explore design through typography. They tend to work on the stone here and design things uh, three-dimensionally. You know, you try and try and architecturally build them, try and sculpt them to something that looks right and feels right, and then you transfer it to the press. There's a, a lot of trial and error involved in it, and that's where the time is. It's quite a slow process, uh, for, and for me, that is the process that I enjoy. You know, and that's good thinking time. I'm always thinking about colour and, and paper and stock all the time. Um, I've got a limited amount of each of those things and I know what I like and I know what works well, so that's in the back of my mind. But the, when I'm designing, I'm, I'm really not thinking about that directly. I'm thinking about the type and the composition. Depending on what I, what I feel I want to do colour-wise, you know, I'll mix some ink. It might be, it will definitely start with a silver base or a gold base, so we've got some nice consistency to that and I'll um, either mix colour in with it or work pure. Then I'll transfer that ink to the press, ink up the press and take a nice proof. And then I'd make some changes, lots of changes, spatially, compositionally, and uh, see whether the whole thing's working. At this stage, as such, I put the job down and I might not work on it for another day or two and I'll revisit and see where um, things might change. In the end, it's the result, it's the final piece that you're looking at. So when I step back and you transfer something from just from paper to a frame, then it takes on another life in a way and it makes it a much more precious object. I've qualified a series of approaches and I call them Smith's Rules, they're my rules. You know, it's a reference to a, an old book called Hart's Rules which was the very most important book which um, described how you set type. Now for me, Smith's Rules is just a series of rules that I go by. Uh, there's a series of measurements, there are a series of typefaces and there are a series of words per line. Just a series of basic principles of really how I use this process. So if I teach now, I teach with those rules in mind. And what it does primarily is simplify the process to people. Because you could, it, it, it's pretty infinite and you could make lots and lots of different choices. So I simplify that. Just like I simplify the choice of typefaces. So really there's a, a, a homing down of, of the technical process with those rules. Those rules for me uh, are there to be broken and there to question, but they're mine and I'm allowed to then address them. This is interesting, this exhibition. Um, we've been asked by a chap called Graham Bicknell. Um, he's putting together a show of, of um, lots of different letterpress people, uh, which I think has been coming, which is a really good idea. Um, it's called Reverting to Type. Uh, which is a nice idea, and there's lots of mixes of contemporary people doing things. For me, uh, what I'd like to show is a, a series of work which is, uh, deals with the rules that I'm, I have here and my educational stance on the, on the work that I'd like to make, but also on the behaviour of people in and around London at this moment. So what I think is interesting about this current show is that it's a real mix of different sorts of people, from graduates that have left this year to master typographers that have been trading you know or designing for 30 to 40 years
I'm part of a generation of designers that are using typography. And there's a young uh, group of designers that are really grabbed hold of this idea that you can make work. You know, you can make work through letterpress, you can control it, and you can craft things. You know, it is a bit of an antidote to new technology. It's not a sheet of white A4 coming out of a printer. So I like terminology to be accurate, but I think things do evolve. You know, I feel that you're allowed to explore things with it, and but there is a set of rules, really, grammatical rules. As long as you understand those, I think you can play with it.